First time for the uh, newspaper review with Jason Reid this morning, political commentator and UK lead at Young Voices. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Nadira. Um, OK, so I think, obviously, we've been talking um, this morning about the Sleas row, um, and I think we'll continue. So, new Sleas row over Johnson's Downing Street redecoration. Yeah, there's been a, a new uproar about um, the redecora redecoration of Boris Johnson's Downing Street flat, uh, which was funded in part by a donation from Tory donor Lord Brownlow, who donated £58,000 via the Cabinet Office. Uh, and the reason this has come up again is because George Eustace, the Environment Secretary and an important Cabinet Minister, has come out to uh, to declare publicly that Catherine Stone, who is the Standards Commissioner, who was wrapped up in the Owen Paterson debacle last week, should not carry out any inquiry into whether the Prime Minister properly declared that donation or not. Eustace said it was a ministerial issue, not a Members of Parliament issue, which has made a lot of people very angry because they say that Boris Johnson is an MP, just like every other MP, and so he shouldn't have any special privileges and should be held to the same standards. And of course, this coming off the back of uh, the Owen Paterson episode last week is the last thing the government wants, another new sleaze headline. A lot of Conservative MPs, understandably, are still very upset about having been uh, forced effectively in a lot of cases into voting through the government's overhauling of the standards procedure only for the government to then U-turn the next week. And then there's the public opinion dimension as well that uh, Boris Johnson's approval rating a week ago already sat at minus 16. And according to a new opinion poll, it's now down to a record low of minus 20, which many are attributing to this perception of sleaze within the, within the Tory party. Yeah, and that's going to rumble on uh, undoubtedly. Now, also um, in the Times, we've got the booster refusal killing the double jabbed. Yeah, the same Sarah Hopkins, who is the chief medical advisor at the UK Health Security Agency, which has taken over a lot of pandemic duties from Public Health England. She's made a statement, uh, the latest in a series of statements, about booster jabs. Uh, the government is very concerned that not enough people are taking up the booster jabs when they are offered them. The acceptance rate at the moment is about 60%. Uh, the push for booster uptake has been much smaller than the vaccine push for the first two doses earlier in the year and has been much less successful. And so there's concern. Dr. Hopkins says that the NHS could come under some serious COVID strain in, uh, as, we, as we move into winter. Uh, and the result of that is that we've got members of SAGE, most recently Professor Dayman Johnson coming out and uh, emphasising once again that Plan B for COVID should still be on the table, even as we edge towards Christmas, that further COVID restrictions in order to keep it under control are very much still under consideration. Yeah, and we've also got, uh, I find this quite interesting, doctors set to be barred, this is also in the Times, from jobs in richer areas. What's the problem? Well, the, the think tank, the Social Market Foundation, has identified what it believes to be a problem with disparities in this country, where some poorer areas have almost half the number of doctors per head than some richer areas have. And it is arguing in a new report that if Boris Johnson wants to level up Britain, uh, he needs to tackle this problem. And their proposed solution is effectively to bar GPs from taking jobs in areas it deems to be too affluent in order to force them to take jobs in poorer areas and therefore increase the number of doctors working in those poorer areas and so make it easier for people to get appointments to see their GP because the numbers are quite stark in terms of the differences in these different areas with the number of GPs that are available and this is a, a radical solution which according to the report is, uh, is under consideration from the government. So, in, in other words, forcing those GPs to take those jobs in deprived areas? Exactly, yeah. There's a, there's a perceived problem at the moment. The GPs are just going to afflu affluent areas and all pooling in the same places. And so even when you look at the national figures, it looks like the numbers of GPs are going up and so everything's fine and dandy. But when you drill down into the figures a little bit, there are some areas which are not seeing the increases in the number of doctors that they need and they're losing out. 
Okay, so we'll move on to the independent. Um, and the story there says uh, police warn Patel over increased trafficking risk. What's the criticism of Patel's bill? Uh, senior police officers have joined with various campaign groups and with the independent anti slavery commissioner as well in criticizing Priti Patel's um, nationality and borders bill. Um, they worry that it's going to water down protections for modern slavery victims. Uh, Patel argues that it's important to prevent people from frustrating immigration action by disclosing too late in the process that they suffered abuse. And so she's proposing in her bill that any victim who was sent to prison for more than 12 months anywhere in the world would automatically become ineligible for modern slavery support in the UK. But these police officers are arguing that uh, it can sometimes take a considerable amount of time for trafficking survivors, for example, to disclose the fact that they've been exploited. For instance, Chief Superintendent Paul Griffiths says um, that the bill is introducing time limits which can be dis disadvantageous to people who take a long time to reconcile their position, which he says can be quite common. Um, he, he quotes cases of victims who often didn't realise or just didn't accept that they were victims of forced labour for up to 18 months. Uh, and so there are concerns that Patel's bill would be a sledgehammer to crack a nut, as another uh, leading barrister said. Um, but it looks like Patel is going to uh, push forward anyway. Some amendments are being proposed by the likes of Ian Duncan Smith on the back benches, but it seems like there isn't much of a rebellion building around this. And so with the government's sizable majority, it still looks likely that the bill will pass. OK, now in the Telegraph, the UK ready to scrap NI protocols, customs, laws. What's the latest development in Brexit, in the Brexit war of words? Yeah, so the war of words is, uh, is hotting up once again in the, in the Brexit Groundhog Day. This latest development is that the government wants it known that it is prepared to trigger Article 16 if required in order to um, get its way when it comes to customs checks on the island of Ireland, especially as we edge towards Christmas and we've got lots of issues with um, supply chains. It's, it's, the government is very keen for the EU to know that it's serious about altering the current trade arrangements. Um, and so the triggering of Article 16 is, is widely expected and that would trigger a month of formal talks between Brussels and London. Um, but the Telegraph is also reporting that the government is planning to propose secondary legislation before Parliament as well, which would slash customs checks and change the laws before Christmas. Those technical changes um, would also send a signal to Brussels that the UK is ready to unilaterally scale back customs checks, even if there isn't any agreement over the new terms of trade, which effectively moves us back to a situation where we might end up with what we might once have called a no-deal Brexit. OK, so um, I hate to do this, but if we look ahead to Christmas, as the Daily Star of does, uh, has done, it says, cheers, it's a white Christmas. Is there a danger of a Christmas wine shortage? That's the suggestion. It seems there was a danger of uh, a Christmas wine shortage, but the Daily Star front page is very positive. Uh, it reports with great enthusiasm that National Rail has stepped in to save us from the wine shortage by putting on what it calls wine trains. Um, there's going to be a weekly uh, weekly wine trains which are going to deliver 4.5 million bottles of imported wine to supermarkets um, every week, every Sunday between now and Christmas, which is going to save us from the wine, wine shortage and make sure that we are all have our glasses full at Christmas. I'm sure you will. Uh, Jason Reed, political commentator and UK lead at Young Voices, thank you very much for going through the papers with me.